911, what's your emergency? Hi, 911. I'm hiking with my friend and she's not feeling well. Early recognition of a patient having an acute myocardial infarction or heart attack and immediate activation of the emergency medical response system is critical to patient survival. Every day, staff at Centera Martha Jefferson Hospital encounter patients with chest pain. Chest pain can be due to other conditions. However, as a medical provider, a patient with chest pain should be regarded as having a myocardial infarction until proven otherwise. Common causes of chest pain include trauma, musculoskeletal pain, anxiety, respiratory illnesses such as asthma or pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, indigestion, myocarditis, angina, and acute myocardial infarction. An ST elevation myocardial infarction, or STEMI, must be rapidly diagnosed and treated. A STEMI is caused by complete occlusion of one or more heart arteries and can only be diagnosed with an electrocardiogram or ECG. Rapid reperfusion or opening of the occluded artery must be done in the cardiac cath lab. If left untreated, the heart muscle tissue that does not receive blood flow may begin to die due to the lack of oxygen. The outcome may be fatal. Time is muscle. Sentara Martha Jefferson Hospital achieved our National Chest Pain Center accreditation in 2016. This distinction demonstrates our commitment to excellent cardiac care based on the latest evidence-based practice. To be nationally accredited, a chest pain center must meet and adhere to strict guidelines. The hospital must be able to demonstrate that the care of all cardiac patients and STEMI processes are rigorously mapped to maximize patient outcomes. Strong relationships with local emergency agencies ensure the best care. Treatment must begin at the time EMS is notified. All team members must know their roles and responsibilities and work together to provide safe, effective care. By doing so, patients have the greatest opportunity for improved outcomes. From the time EMS arrives, a STEMI patient comes in contact with a large team of medical providers. Each team member must understand his or her role and the importance of clear communication when caring for these patients. At Centera Hospital, staff members are trained to use safety habits and tools when communicating and interacting with other team members when performing high stress, high stakes work. During this video, examples of the five safety habits and tools will be demonstrated. This video is based on a real clinical case seen here at Centera Martha Jefferson. Some names and details have been changed to comply with patient privacy regulations. Time is muscle and every minute counts when a STEMI is suspected. Not all patients, especially women, encounter the classic symptoms of chest pain and jaw pain. Clinical symptoms can include chest pain, arm pain, shortness of breath, nausea and vomiting, fatigue, indigestion, back pain, jaw pain, diaphoresis, pallor, just not feeling right, impending feeling of doom. Nine one one, what's your emergency? Hi, nine one one. I'm hiking with my friend, and she's not feeling well. She's having some indigestion, but she also says it feels like the pain that she had three months ago when she had her heart attack. Okay, is she awake and alert? She is. Has she taken any aspirin today? She says she hasn't taken any of her medicines today. Okay, do you have any aspirin with you? No, I don't have anything. We're out hiking. Okay, I'm dispatching a rescue unit to you. They should be there shortly. In the meantime, stay, just stay with her. Okay, thank you. We're on our way. According to the most recent national guidelines, a patient experiencing a STEMI should be taken to the cardiac cath lab and receive reperfusion with a balloon catheter of the occluded artery within 90 minutes of arrival. This is called the door to balloon time. However, care of the patient begins when the first medical provider, such as EMS, makes contact with the patient. The goal for first medical contact to balloon time is also 90 minutes. So we will begin the clock now as EMS arrives to the patient. 
Ma'am, on a scale of one to ten, how bad is your pain right now? Um, it's it's not really pain, it's just this weird feeling, but I mean, I guess an eight, and I just don't feel good. I just feel so nauseous. We need to do an EKG. I need you to hold as still as you can for me while we get you connected, okay? Little pinch. Pinch. Several factors can affect the quality of an EKG. One of them is artifact or movement. Another is lead placement. Let's review lead placement now. EKG lead is very important, so we want to make sure we got the correct intercostal spaces. You can find the intercostal spaces from two ways. You can go up to the top of the manubrium or top of the sternum, and you can look, feel for a little ridge. That's where the top part of the sternum joins to the sternum, and underneath that would be intercostal space two. Right below that is three and four, or you can just start at the top if you can't feel that ridge, which sometimes you often cannot on patients, and feel for the first intercostal space. Be one, two, three, four. Now you want to place your V1 and V2 next to the sternum, not on the sternum. And always feel for these intercostal spaces because everybody is a little different. Now I always put one, two, and four next since three has to go between two and four. Never go by the nipple line because the nipple line varies and you see a lot of people go by the nipple line. What you want to do is you want to do mid-clavicular and kind of go in there and wear your mid-clavicular and you're going to go to the fifth intercostal space. With women, you always want to go under their breasts and not on top of the breast. And then three is going to go between two and four. Six, I always put six because that's mid-axillary on the same intercostal space line. And then five is anterior axillary. Then we're going to put our arms. They're going to go about on this forearm area on the inside about two inches below. Really, you can place them anywhere on here, but for consistency, we want to go about two inches below. And then on the legs, we want to be on the inside of the leg, below the knee, not on the bone, on the soft tissue in here. We want to make sure if there's hairy, chest we want to make sure to get a good contact and so you're going to may have to shave these the hair so you can do that and then you would print ECG and look at the ECG when you get ready to give the ECG to the doctor and you're looking at it, always look for any alerts on here and they'll be signified by little asterisks. If it says acute STEMI, give it to a physician immediately so that they can evaluate it and determine whether a STEMI needs to be called. You're also, you're going to want to look on here for arm lead reversal. If you see a wavering baseline, anything like that, you're going to want to repeat it so that we can have an accurate EKG for our patients. Centera Martha Jefferson Hospital, this is Kyle on Orange Medic 21. We're en route to your facility with one patient, female, age 42, 42. Chief complaint today is nausea and indigestion. She states this is how she felt for her previous MI three months ago. She rates her discomfort at an eight out of 10. I think she's having a STEMI break. EKG shows two to three millimeter elevation in leads two, three, and AVF with T-wave inversion and reciprocal leads. She's hypotensive in the 80s over 50s. She's bradycardic with a heart rate of 56. Oxygen saturations are 97% on room air. Break. We thought about flying her by helicopter, but we're about 15 minutes out by ground. Do you have any questions or need clarification? Kyle, oh, thank you. Hold while I get back to Ricardi. Kyle, this is Dan Ricardi. I'll activate the stimulator to get the CAD lab team on their way. Please transmit the EKG if possible, and we'll see you in 15 minutes. 
Orange Medic 21 is direct. Ashley, can you dial 12 and activate the STEMI alert, please? When a STEMI alert is activated, multiple people are contacted. This includes the general cardiologist on call, the interventional cardiologist who will perform the procedure, a cath lab technician, two cath lab nurses, the nursing supervisor, and the ICU charge nurse. Each of them will play an important role. All right, Carmen, there's a STEMI on the way, uh, but since it's Saturday, the cath lab is not here yet, so we're gonna have to do everything we can to get ready for him. Uh, as soon as the patient gets here, I wanna move him over an arm stretcher as quickly as possible. If you do me a favor, we'll grab the EKG machine, uh, we'll grab the clippers and the defibrillator. We wanna put her on our pads as quickly as possible in case she develops a critical arrhythmia. Uh, when the patient gets here, we need to make sure we zero the bed so we can get an accurate weight. Uh, I'll register the patient and do medications if you would Start an IV, draw labs, we'll do a rainbow, and uh, get an EKG. Does that sound good? Okay, so just to clarify, I'm going to get the defibrillator, get the EKG machine, hook the patient up to all the monitors, start a saline lock, and draw labs. You'll give the meds and get the patient registered, correct? That's correct. So now that we're getting her transitioned over to your monitors, this is Miss Black. She's 42 years old. About 30 minutes ago, she started complaining of some indigestion, just not feeling well. She had an MI about three months ago. Today, um, she was walking when it happened. I have for you an 18 gauge IV in the left AC. Uh, that way, we have the right side available for the heart cath. Um, she had while we were being or while we were transporting. Uh, a run of ventricular tachycardia that she converted out of back into a normal sinus rhythm. Um, I have her on the defibrillation pads though, just in case. Uh, her EKG looked like an inferior MI, uh, and so I withheld any nitroglycerin from her for her, but she did get the 325 milligrams of aspirin. Um, most recent vitals were a heart rate of 52, an oxygen saturation of 99%, and a blood pressure of 92 over 50. Uh, she also got a 500 milliliter normal saline bolus. Do you have any questions? All right, I think I got that. We withheld nitroglycerin. You did give her 324 milligrams of aspirin PO, and she's receiving a 500 milliliter normal saline bolus. Is that correct? That's correct. Outstanding. All right, Amy, you're in good hands. Thank you. Hi, Mrs. Black. Hi. I'm Dr. Goldberg. Hi. I'm one of the general cardiologists. I'll be following your case. They contacted me because it looks like you're having a heart attack. Oh. So the cath lab team is on their, in, their way in right now okay. uh, to get a, an emergent look at your heart. Okay. Um, it sounds like you had a heart attack about three months ago, is that correct? I did, but I'm so bad about remembering to take my medications because before that I was, I was healthy and didn't have to take any. I see. So you were on a medication like Berlinta or Plavix mm -hmm. and you're not taking them any longer? I just, I just forget to take them. It's not okay. that I, you know, it's just I forget. I understand it can sometimes be hard to remember to take your medications, but those medications help keep your stent open, and when people stop taking them or miss doses, you run the risk of developing a clot inside your stent, and that can lead to a heart attack. Oh. I'm concerned that that's actually what's happening to oh. you right now. Um, but we're gonna get a look in the cath lab mm -hmm. and try to open up the vessel. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, previously, when they did the procedure, they went through your right wrist, mm -hmm. and I think the plan is to continue to do that today. 
Okay, is it going to hurt? Um, you'll feel a pinch and a burn when they're numbing up the skin, um, but once they have the catheters in the artery, you shouldn't notice any difference because you don't have any nerve endings inside your vessels. Okay. When they find a blockage, if they have to open it up and they're deploying a stent, you might feel uh, some chest discomfort, discomfort for a few seconds, but that should go away once they're done deploying the stent. So Dr. Fisher will be the one doing the procedure. I'll be down there watching. I'm gonna have you sign the consent form while the cath lab team is on its way in, okay? Okay, so I'm putting in the dose for the heparin, 40 units per kilogram. So that would be 5,000 units IV bolus, and then a loading dose of Berlinta, 180 milligrams PO. Gotcha, so we're gonna do 5,000 units heparin IV, 180 milligrams of Berlinta PO. Okay, uh, Doc, 5,000, that seems a little, 60 kilos, I make that at 40 units a kilo, 2,400? Yes, thank you. That is correct. The correct dose would be 2,400 milligrams since she weighs 60 kilograms and the dose is 40 units per kilogram. I'm going ahead and checking to make sure the correct order is in the computer. Very good. Thank you, sir. Hey, Kellen, the cath lab team called. They're ready for Mrs. Blatt. Thank you. Sintera Martha Jefferson's Cardiac Catheterization Lab is located on the first floor next to the OR and Interventional Radiology Suites. EMS and ED staff should wheel the patient headfirst into the cardiac cath lab. The room is not sterile, so a cap and mask are not required. Once in the procedure area, the patient will be immediately transferred over to the lab table and hooked to our monitors. Fluoroscopy is used for cardiac cath procedures to provide live x-ray images of vessels and coronary arteries. The Commonwealth of Virginia requires that all staff in the procedural area wear a lead apron to prevent excess exposure to radiation. All right, Amber, this is Amy. 42-year-old female, uh, had chest pain while she's walking on the trails. Looks like she's having an inferior MI. Um, we gave her 2,400 units of heparin IV. We gave her 180 milligrams of Berlin to PO, and she had 324 milligrams of aspirin by squad before she came in. Um, she's still having about eight out of 10 chest pain. We brought down her stent card and her signed consents. Do you have any questions? No, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, everyone in the room needs to have lead on. Hey Amy, we're going to be working really quickly around you. It's going to be a little overwhelming, but our entire team is here to help you, okay? We're going to be prepping your right wrist as well as your right groin area. We usually go in through the wrist, but occasionally we need groin access, okay? You're doing great. Let me get the defibrillator for you. Chad, that's okay. I'll handle this. Dr. Fisher should be here any minute, so you can go ahead and scrub it. Okay. Hey Amber, I need a blood pressure. Oh, okay, sure. Okay, let's do our pre-procedure pause. This is Amy Black, date of birth 6-24-75, no known allergies. We're doing coronary angiography, coronary angiography for an inferior STEMI via the right radial. GFR is greater than 60. She's received aspirin, 324 milligrams, and Berlinta, 180 milligrams orally, 2,400 units of IV heparin. In the room will be Chad, Amber, and Josh, and Megan's on the computer. Any comments, questions, or concerns? No. No. Okay, let's get started. Hang on, the defibrillator isn't plugged in. Can you check that? It's on the oh, floor. Yeah, thank you. Hold on, Dr. Fisher. Okay, we're all plugged in. Thank you. Please give one milligram of versed and 50 micrograms of fentanyl for sedation, please. Okay. That's one milligram of Versed and 50 micrograms of fentanyl. Thank you. Okay, sedation's in. In the cardiac cath lab, the patient's hemodynamic status is continually monitored using uh, pulse oximetry, six lead cardiac monitoring, and arterial waveforms. Blood pressures are taken every three to five minutes. Emergency defibrillation equipment is available and hooked up for immediate use if needed. At birth, our coronary arteries are smooth on the inside, but risk factors such as hypertension, high cholesterol, and diabetes can lead to plaque buildup and calcium buildup. Excessive plaque buildup can put you at risk for a STEMI. There are three main coronary arteries. The left anterior descending artery goes down the middle of the heart and feeds the anterior wall. The left circumflex artery goes onto the left lateral wall. 
both the left anterior descending and the left circumflex come off a short artery called the left main. A blockage in the left main is often fatal. The right coronary artery comes and feeds the bottom side or inferior wall of the heart. It is also the part of the heart that feeds the sinus node and the uh, rhythm mechanism of the heart. So patients with inferior myocardial infarction will often have rhythm abnormalities such as complete heart block. The right coronary artery also feeds the right ventricle and right atrium. So patients with inferior STEMIs are often preload dependent and you have to be careful if you use nitroglycerin as it can cause significant hypotension. Rhythm. VTAC. I see it. Hold on. Okay, she's not coming out of it. Charge the 200 joules. Charging. Everyone all clear? clear. All clear. clear. All right, shocking 200 joules. She's in normal sinus rhythm. Okay. STEMI patients are at increased risk for cardiac arrest. The ultimate goal of advanced cardiac life support is to get the patient to the cath lab so the blocked artery can be opened. If a patient experiences cardiac arrest in the cath lab, our priorities may be slightly different than what some providers are used to. Chest compressions, while still important, may be interrupted so that the cardiologist can obtain arterial access, place equipment in the artery, and open the blocked artery. Going up with the balloon. Up at 12 atmospheres. And down. Okay, the artery is open. Let's place a stent. Our Dota balloon time is 53 minutes. Amy, we've opened the blockage. How are you feeling? Okay. Great, you're doing great. We're almost done. I'm glad to see you're feeling better. You had formed a total blockage on your previous stent. I didn't take it out, but I placed another stent inside to keep it open. And it's very important you take your medications every day from now on. Okay. You're right. I, I wasn't doing a very good job of that. Um, I, I just have been so healthy and not a pill taker, but this has been a real wake-up call, so I'll make sure that I take them the right way. And I just want to thank you and your team, your whole team, for all you've done for me, Dr. Fisher. Thank well, it's, you. It's our pleasure. That's what we're here for. Thank you. We're all done, Miss Black. You did great. So there was a blockage in your old stent. We were able to open that, and now the vessel is open. Uh, this right here is a pressure bandage. It's going to stay on for about an hour. Um, what I need you to do is not use this arm at all. Keep an eye on it. Make sure you're not bleeding. Also, be aware of any kind of large lumps that might be forming around the site. That means you're bleeding, but it's pooling under your skin. So if that happens, you need to use your call bell and call for your nurse immediately. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what you're going to do if you see any bleeding or a large lump under your skin? I'm going to press my call button and call my nurse and tell her that I'm bleeding. Yes, okay. absolutely. Great. Um, also, this is your new stent card. Mm -hmm. um, so it has all the information, just like your old one, uh, what kind of stent it is, where it is, and that you had it implanted here at Centera Martha Jefferson. Okay. Make copies of it and keep mm -hmm. it with your old one um, okay. and also place one on the refrigerator for emergency services in case you ever need them okay. okay okay all right thank you very much for everything Amber you are so welcome it was our pleasure glad you're feeling better thank you every STEMI patient is unique some arrive in stable condition others are more critical and can be unstable each patient is unique in terms of cardiac and overall health we will determine how we treat our patients and how we'll work together as a team to quickly efficiently and safely provide the best care possible. Just remember, time is muscle with every STEMI. At Centera Martha Jefferson, we collect data on every STEMI. Our STEMI database tracks EMS first medical response times, door to EKG times, door to balloon times, cath lab response times, patient overall outcomes, and many other data points. This data is reported at the unit, hospital, system, and national levels. We strive to provide feedback to every provider involved in every STEMI. Together as a team, we save lives and improve health every day.